Recently, Russia has tested an anti-satellite missile on their Cosmos 1408 satellite. Now, the aftermaths of this test would put the International Space Station in danger with a potential collision of debris. In this video, we will talk about anti-satellite testing and why this is really bad. So let's talk about that. First thing we need to talk about is space debris. Space debris is anything that we put into orbit around Earth or essentially into space that doesn't really have a purpose. This can be anything from an extended upper stage of a rocket that is no longer being used, a satellite that is out of commission and just orbiting the Earth, parts of a satellite that have fallen off, or maybe even a toolbox that an astronaut accidentally let go of when they are fixing the space station. All of those things don't really have a use to us, so they're essentially space debris. But why is space debris so bad, or how is it so harmful? Let's start with an analogy here on Earth and then compare it to space. Let's say you're driving down the highway and the car in front of you hits up a pebble and it hits your windshield. If you're lucky, it didn't cause a crack. If you're unlucky, you might need to get your windshield repaired. But at the end of the day, it's really minor and not big of a problem. But let's take that small pebble, maybe about that big, and move it into space. And now it's going to hit our satellite. Now you may imagine at first glance that, okay, maybe it could damage a solar panel or impact one of our instruments and not be too big of a deal. However, there's a little bit of a difference between driving down the highway and a satellite in orbit of Earth. And the difference is that the satellite is going 250 times faster than you are on the highway. So then you might think, okay, how big of an impact does that make if we go back to Earth? And because of energy, velocity is actually squared meaning that it's not only 250 times more energy of the impact, but it's actually 60,000 times more energy. So it's equivalent to instead of a pebble hitting your windshield, it's like hitting a deer at full speed on the highway. That could not only be devastating to your vehicle, but could also be fatal to the driver. So that's the difference that we're talking about here. A small, tiny object that hits a satellite in space could be absolutely devastating to the mission causing it to break up into thousands of pieces that then become a space debris. So we could see what the problem is here. Since objects in space are traveling so fast, anything that's a decent size could do devastating damage to a satellite. What is an anti-satellite test or an anti-satellite missile? And it's essentially the exact name. The idea is that we use a missile that we launch here on Earth and we try and impact a satellite that is in orbit. Now this has only been conducted a few times or actually tested and as I'm aware has never been tested on an enemy satellite. It's only ever been used to test the capabilities of the missile. But with that being said, let's go through a couple of examples or cases in which this has been done. The first example was in February of 2008 where the United States launched an anti-satellite missile at one of their own defunct satellites that was an altitude of 250 kilometers. Another example is when India launched an anti-satellite missile more recently in March of 2019, hitting a satellite that was an altitude of 280 kilometers. Now this most recent test, which was conducted by Russia in November of 2021, hit a satellite that was an altitude of around 500 kilometers above the surface. And the last example we'll talk about here was China in January of 2007 hit a satellite with an altitude of 865 kilometers. So those are just four examples at four different altitudes of anti-satellite tests, ultimately missiles that impacted a satellite and caused a vast amount of debris. But is this a lost cause, a lost hope? Eventually, is space just gonna be filled with tiny particles that we'll never be able to solve? And the answer is kind of yes and no. It's a problem that we're launching more things and also potentially creating more debris, but at the same time, Earth itself is actually helping us clean up some of this debris because of Earth's atmosphere. Although there are satellites in orbit around Earth, that doesn't mean that we can neglect or essentially remove the atmosphere. I actually have an entire video that talks about where our atmosphere ends. And the main point is that even though they're in orbit around Earth, the Earth's atmosphere can actually cause the satellites to gradually, over long periods of time, deorbit. So, for example, if you're in a low Earth orbit, the Earth's atmosphere can have a rather large effect. But the problem is, is the further away you get from the surface of Earth, the less the atmosphere is going to have an effect on you. 
Therefore, if you're very far away, then it's not really going to make a difference. But let's take a look at those examples again and see how long it would take for some of the debris to actually deorbit. So first, let's look at the 200 to 300 kilometer region. This is where the United States and India conducted their anti-satellite tests. In this region, it would take most objects that would be generated from the collision to deorbit over the course of potentially a few weeks and maybe a year or two. Now, if we go higher to where Russia most recently conducted their anti-satellite test, that would be more so on the order of a few years and potentially a decade or a little bit more. Therefore, we're probably going to see the remnants of some of these objects for another decade or so. And then if we go a little bit higher to 860 kilometers, which is the region where China conducted their anti-satellite test, and again, this was over 10 years ago at this time, their objects are still in orbit, or most of them are still in orbit, for a matter of decades to come and maybe even another century for some of those objects. So it's important to note that as we get further and further away from the surface of Earth, these objects will remain in orbit for longer periods of time. Now a reason why this most recent test got a lot of attention is because it's around a 500 kilometer altitude, which is very close to the altitude of the International Space Station. In fact, there were a few close conjunction events or where the debris field of this impact could potentially hit the ISS. And for that reason, and for a short period of time, the crew on board the International Space Station was actually told to put their spacesuits on and go to their crew capsules. Because if there was a major impact with the space station, they would have to undock and then return back to Earth ultimately. Therefore, we could see why this would gain a lot of attention. Now, most people that are familiar with this, and I imagine most of you watching, probably have already came to the conclusion that really anti-satellite testing is bad. It's really bad. I mean, space debris by itself is already a problem, and by showing that you can hit a satellite with a missile, well, that's great in terms of your scientific and technological capabilities, but now we have a lot of objects in space that could potentially hinder your own satellites, other countries' satellites, science missions, the International Space Station, the Chinese sat Space Station, all of this could be impacted by just one anti-satellite test. So I know whenever this happens, a lot of people are like, why would anyone do that? But then we also see that many of these other countries have also done it. So just going into the future, I hope that this is the last one and that we don't really have to worry about at least anti-satellite testing in the future, and maybe we can more so worry about how we can get rid of the debris that's already up there. So with all that being said, if you have any questions about this event specifically, or the deorbiting uh, component of these objects in space, let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.